finally allow yourself to receive the energetic vibrational experience of your dreams and desires. If we're constantly consumed by what's all around us, then we're not making space for what could be. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move through this, but I know that it's going to be okay and I'm open to receiving tools. I believe that things are going to get better. Into my intimate manifestation journal. Hello, my fellow Earth Angels. Thank you so much for being here and joining me today. I am so stoked about this conversation around manifestation and manifestation journals because I have been using them since I learned about the law of attraction in sophomore year of high school. And every single thing that I've ever written in a manifestation journal has come to fruition without a doubt at some point without fail. And so it's just been a practice that I have continued doing and it's just really, really fun. Fun. I have been using this one for a little over the past year and recently started creating and curating my new one and I wanted to take you through my process and little things that I like to add and do to make this really fun and just the way that I use these journals because you've probably seen it a lot in my videos and I basically use this as a manifestation tool but also as a way to track my spiritual progress in a way and not track it because I have some end goal but just as a way to really document any landmark moments of ascension or healing or rewriting of certain thoughts, moments where I heal inner child wounds or that I feel so super aligned. I love documenting all of that. And there's also something really special about getting something out of your mind, your consciousness, this fifth dimensional realm and putting it into the third dimension by writing it down and making it more solid. Journaling, I think in the past used to be something that made me just feel bored or maybe a little intimidated, but I really love journaling because it can become such a meditation, allowing yourself to drop into the sensations of the moment and describing everything in detail as a sensory experience and what it feels to your spirit to exist in this now moment. What's coming through when you uh, commune with the elements or with nature or just with you know, your body and stillness, what is lingering in that space, the space between your inhale and exhale and channeling that through. It's just exciting to make space and to witness what's present for you. And that's another thing I want to say before we get into this is that these journals aren't just for the lightest thoughts and for the positive, you know, aspects of my reality, but I like to be real with myself and my journal about what I'm going through and yet still viewing everything from the lens of a higher perspective consciousness, not running away from any aspect of my reality or any story that I'm processing through. I have a lot of pages in here, in this journal in particular, where I'm dealing with heartbreak and also with my body dysmorphia and eating patterns. And it is really, I think, important to also document that. And writing things that are dense that you may be going through is also a really good way to view them objectively because you're telling them you're allowing them to be molded and removed from you and you're not having as much of an attachment to the story and the way that it's unfolding for you. I make space for it all as always and just try to have a higher consciousness perspective and even writing in a journal like I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move through this but I know that it's going to be okay and I'm open to receiving tools I believe that things are going to get better. That is really helpful. And I have a lot of different rituals in my life that have been stable for the past five years, which includes my yoga and meditation practice. This is definitely one of them. And I feel like no matter what happens in my external reality, I feel safe and I feel grounded and secure in my knowing because of these rituals. This is my new baby. I'm gonna have a link to these journals down below because they are really great. They're really portable and and they're just sketchbook paper, so they're completely blank. I love sketchbooks or journals like this because then I can do anything and I'm not confined by lines. I put this little butterfly sticker on it and I'm gonna switch up the camera angle so you can fully see into my intimate <laughs> manifestation journal. I love kind of having a intention for my journals every single time that I create them. 
I almost pretend like I'm talking to the universe through my journal. My journal is this like direct transmission into the grand void. I feel like it does have its own consciousness. It's like alive with my dreams and my prayers. So I really like to include an intention and I'll read you my intention for this journal. To every soul's grand journey of return, to our desires, which are our compasses, to the complete and total reclamation of our divine sovereignty, to the stories that have expedited our evolution and the releasing of those stories as we create an entirely new way of being. Within these pages lie the miracles of one's journey here on earth. With the guidance of all my archangels, may I do the most good and complete my mission here. May I live fully from heart-centered awareness, experiencing and embodying the fullest capacity of love, compassion, and oneness. And then on the bottom, I just wrote musings of Hitomi Angela Perasa Mochizuki, of stars and earth. And now let's take a peek inside my journal. We have the little dedication intention page. And I usually start off my journals with photos of home, a home sanctuary, because this is where I spend most of my time. And I have experienced a lot of trauma within my home growing up. Home actually never felt like a safe space. So it's one of my deepest desires rooted in my inner child to create a beautiful, intentional, safe home that feels like a refuge from the world and feels like a full circle moment of finally being able to create a space that allows my inner child to feel safe. This home is filled with love and intention in every corner. I have always been worthy of this. This feeling of spaciousness and it feels earthy and every corner has intention. Everything is placed with love. My sanctuary is where my love grows and I find myself again and again. When I look around, all I see are pure blessings, miracles that have aligned perfectly one after the other to bring me to this blissful moment where I am safe and I am free. It was never random. I'm not going to read everything that I wrote because I really go into detail about how it feels and what it looks like, but just the main things. I love this image so much of this table of food. One of my ultimate dreams is serving a big bowl of salad onto a wooden table surrounded by people who I get to share love with, feeling so whole, being able to nourish those that I cherish in my life so fully. There is peace in my heart as I remember life really can be as sweet as I've always imagined. I am more abundant than ever while needing so little. What motivates me most is the prospect of a new day filled with opportunities to share the love, knowing, and abundance I have created. I feel like my best self in service to others. This home provides the solid, stable base for my spirit to ground, awaken, and come alive to my service. I really like these pages. This says, I am aware of the moment-to-moment -moment alchemization within, meaning I am aware of how to reclaim my power in each moment that I feel it becomes stagnant. Everything is possible under the spell of right now. The pursuit of my wildest dreams is simply a matter of returning to this breath again and again. I return to my source of nothing, where all things have the space to enter. I move through stagnation with ease and clarity. I move like water, reclaiming my power in each now moment, using the tools and medicine within and all around me. This section really emphasizes feeling nourished on all levels of my being with fresh food and with good books and sweet sisterhood and time alone and time in nature with my bare feet commuting with the earth. I wrote some little intentions. My inner space feels so radiant and enchanting that it magnifies and manifests externally. The more I nourish my being, the more my auric light field expands and illuminates my fullest potential. The depth at which I return to myself leaves me speechless. Down here, I just wrote, everything I absorb with my senses is of the highest quality nourishment. I am surrounded by the purest reflections. I eat fresh vegetables grown right in my backyard. I try new recipes, experiment, and adore the ritual of cooking. I go to so many worlds and learn so many new words through the endless literature I read. It feels utterly enchanting to gain a deeper awareness of this human experience. My bare feet kiss the earth every single day, rejoicing in its messages. I feel more connected to source with each new day. 
Time is a boundless thing. I am sensual and flirtatious with life. I give and receive with ease. Energy flows freely through my entire body. My spine is straight and my breath is long. I like these series of images as a reminder of my nothingness, my connection and relationship to source. I have deeply spiritual experiences every single time I go into nature and I just like to channel those a bit. This says, I pray deeply and often, feeling so connected to my angels, ancestors, and galactic family, held and supported in a grid of light that calls upon my highest embodiment in all moments. I act from that space of knowing. I live from the intuition of my gut, my heart, and my womb. I continue to allow guidance from all of my spirit teachers. In doing so, my most radiant self emerges. I feel the wisdom of the mountains, the trees, the wind, the fire, the waters. When I walk upon the earth, I feel the heartbeat of life and the voices of my ancestors beckoning me deeper into my wild, untamed self. They remind me that my liberation is theirs too. Sisterhood, this is so important to me. Sisterhood is everything. And this is a little tip I like to add to my journals is a thank you letter. Thank you for showing up in my life so divinely. It feels like we have danced before in a past life. Your spirit feels so familiar and closer than any relations I've had before. I feel like I can do anything, express anything, shift into anything with you by my side. It is a fifth dimensional, transcendental experience. Words cannot describe how empowering it is to feel safe to show up in every one of my moods or expressions and not think twice about it. Your presence in my life has helped me heal so many stories simply through being yourself. I have the utmost respect and reverence for your beautiful and brave soul and the way it shines, healing and illuminating everything it touches. I am in awe of all that you are, a sister. And I wrote here, your death is my death, your birth is my birth, which is a quote from I May Destroy You, a show on HBO that I really liked. But that's how I feel about my community and my sisters. When people come into my life and into my heart, they become my family and we just help to empower each other in every single way and evolve consciously. That means so much to me. I don't wanna have any surface level relations in my life. This is a grand journey of return. The sacred sisterhood is, wow, so important to me. And why I put it before my like romantic love is the sisterhood, because that shit is forever. And then we have some of my little romantic love wishes. Over here it says, we choose ourselves and then each other every single day. Loving you is a full body, yes. I love this little quote up here. It says, I love you unconditionally, but the conditions are great, which is something that my lover said to me recently. And I just thought that was so cute. It's like, I will love you no matter what. I love you so fully, so unconditionally, but goddamn, you treat me so good and you make it so easy at the same time. I am a bit of a hopeless romantic and believe the honeymoon phase can last forever. I was in a three-year partnership and the honeymoon phase was so just real. I think that when you are connecting to yourself and choosing your own love and priorities every single day and communing with your sense of fulfillment every single day, it's so much easier to show up for someone else more fully. First choosing yourself and then choosing to share that self with the person that you love. So that's really important to me that we both have our own spiritual practice and can show up from a place of fullness and that fullness not coming from the other person, but coming from my own source of joy, excitement and love for life. And here are just some journaling entries from yesterday. And I really like to write objective truths. So these are things that are just real and true core beliefs and knowings within me. No matter what stories may shift in my head, these things I hold as objective truths. Spending time alone is necessary to remember who you are. Fear of taking up space is a learned behavior from past programming. Every time you speak your boundaries, your needs, and truth, you are liberating yourself from past karmas. Your silence is just as sacred as your noise. You can let go and be yourself in every single way. You are safe to rise. 
and we are coming to the end of what I have created so far in my journal. I really like this prompt as well. I wrote, who are you truly on top? And this is just a way to describe yourself for when you may be having really intrusive thoughts about guilting or shaming yourself that aren't serving you and that simply aren't true about yourself. You can come to this page and remember who you really are. It's a little corny, but it's just good to write down. I am a highly empathetic being with a large capacity for love, compassion, and inspiring others on their journey of remembrance and reclamation of the self. I am in tune with the energies all around me, and it is one of my superpowers. My deepest wish is to truly do the most good upon this planet that I possibly can while enjoying life and breaking through my own karmas. I believe in the power of love. I get overly excited about small things and truly rejoice in the accomplishments of those around me. And I ended it there, but there's a lot more that I want to add, but it's just a sweet letter to yourself. Like This is who I am and I am kind and I am graceful and I am so worthy of love. So I really like that. In the next few pages, I was going to write some affirmations about honoring my body, the wisdom of my gut and my womb and so I just wrote here I trust the wisdom and intuitive guidance of my body and this is just a page from a Montauk Chia book about cultivating sexual energy and that's another thing you can do is just cut out pages from books that you really like or diagrams that show a transference of energy or just different things that really resonate with you and that is my journal so far I've only started using this four days ago and it feels pretty exciting and fulfilling. I already know that I'm going to birth so many dreams and creations with this journal on my side. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning into it. I just want to say if you're trying to start your own manifestation journal, some things I recommend is to print out some photos. I curated most of the photos in this journal on Pinterest, so I'll have that Pinterest board linked down below. And I also recommend having a mini little sketch pad so you can rip out pieces of paper, kind of like I did on the front. And if you make mistakes, this is a great way to make your journal look cute and also cover up any spelling mistakes in your writing that you may notice after. It is part of the process of manifesting to rest in those high vibrational states of being of joy and gratitude and really be enjoying the process of creating your dream reality and letting go of all other narratives and really asking yourself if I could have anything that I desire in this world if I felt truly worthy and everything aligned perfectly what would that look like write with grace and embody your truth as you are uncovering it really breathe in your vision I really like the idea of breathing in your visions instead of visualization almost. It's like really allow yourself to receive the energetic vibrational experience of your dreams and desires. And that is ultimately how you manifest and attract things into your reality by you know, creating a vibrational alignment to receive. And when you are creating your journal, I definitely recommend completely cleansing your altar, maybe surrounding yourself with crystals or creating a crystal grid around you, lighting candles and making it a sacred ritual because it really is perhaps playing some high vibrational frequencies, drinking yummy tea and allowing yourself to fully drop into the senses and let your imagination take over. If we're constantly consuming by what's all around us then we're not making space for what could be or a shift in our reality reclaiming every single narrative and every single story and event that has unfolded for me and adding it to my great dance upon this life because of those areas of density that I have rested and I have created so many amazing positive rituals for myself I know what to do when I feel out of energetic alignment I know that I'm worthy of love I'm resilient and I speak my boundaries I really reclaim my sovereignty in myself in all ways, day to day, moment to moment. And I do this with such strength and valor because I have built up so much tough skin and have shown myself again and again that I can rise despite everything going on around me. Now moving forward because of how all of these experiences have molded me, I know to keep surrendering because it will only bring me into deeper truth, into deeper knowing, into strengthening my awareness and polishing my tools 
tools on my tool belt. I hope that we can all continue surrendering and finding the silver lining, finding the miracle in all that is manifesting around us externally and slowly beginning to reclaim our power and have a say and be an active part in the way that we are being molded by life so that we can do the most good, so that we can break through our karma, so that we can self-actualize and feel peace and feel joy and fully enjoy this life without any other story going on in the background. So that is my wish and those are some of my prayers. Thank you so much for joining me today and for witnessing any of my journey. I'm so grateful. I'm sending you so much love and so many blessings and just so much power. May you reclaim your own power and your own sovereignty at every level of your being, even just by witnessing areas that you may be giving your power away that's the perfect place to start because you're aware of where your energy may be leaking and you can call it all back you can call your thoughts back to you you can reclaim your body by making love to yourself yeah thank you so much for being here it means the world to me i hope you can take some deep belly breaths and roll your shoulders back let your heart open to the sky to be molded to be surrendered to this life until the next time i see you I cherish you. Bye.